How do you handle aggressive fish in a nano reef tank? Stay tuned for five tips. So this is a story about how I was able to beat fish aggression so far in my 16 gallon BioCube nano tank. So to start off, I started cycling my tank with one peppermint shrimp. A few weeks later, I introduced a royal grandma. I noticed immediately that she was being kind of aggressive toward the peppermint shrimp, just opening up her mouth, uh, kind of going after it a little bit. I'll show some clips right here. And she wouldn't bite at it, so I felt like that was, that was okay, maybe kind of expected. And, and, and she'd even kind of back herself into the shrimp, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and, and they were the only two, um, you know, really uh, big organisms in the, in the tank kind of interacting. This is a brand new channel. I'm trying to help as many new reefers as possible. So smash that like button and hit subscribe. Uh, she wouldn't really go after, I take it back. She, she does go after hermit crabs. She'll like knock them off a rock, which is kind of funny. Um, not, not all the time, but anyway, she was just kind of like, treating the whole tank as her own. And uh, then I introduced a cleaner shrimp and she did not like the cleaner. He would get up close to her and I noticed that his uh, feelers ended up getting nipped off. So she would nip off his feelers. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then I noticed like even one of his legs was gone. Um, then I read up actually a cleaner shrimp whenever they molt, which for me, it's like every two weeks or so, um, they'll actually grow back like legs and and their their feelers and then i noticed like in the first day it would um it would get nipped off again and then eventually the cleaner shrimp died i wasn't really sure why um and not so long after that the peppermint shrimp died but all that to say um she was kind of aggressive and i was getting concerned so i'm wondering what is she going to do when i add clownfish etc um long story short i thought i had some ache in the tank i moved her over to a quarantine tank realizing later that yes, she was flashing and stuff, but no, she probably didn't have the white spots. And so I had her in a quarantine tank and I decided what the heck, I'm gonna go ahead and add the clowns. I'm gonna add, and then I decided I'd add a couple Bengai Cardinals, which I wish I, I did a little more research on them. I added everything into the quarantine. It seemed to be going okay, except one of the Bengais wasn't eating very well. And then I uh, talked to a few uh, hobbyists and they thought like, okay, well maybe it's being bullied. So I move it in, uh, in a breeder um, net um, container over to my display, because I don't think I have ick anymore, along with a couple clownfish, because I was trying to introduce them to a long tentacle anemone. That didn't work, long tentacles. Don't recommend them for first time uh, anemone owner, um, they don't ship well, apparently as well, and that one didn't do too well. But anyway, they're in the tank together. Um, one's in the breeder net. It finally starts eating, and after one night, I release it, and uh, it seems freaked out by the two clowns. By the way, these clowns are just from ORA, super small, so I wasn't too concerned. Um, but uh, one night after the other, the clowns end up getting, uh, well, I mean, the bang guy ends up losing its back like anal fin, one of them, uh, gets bit off. And then the next night, the other one, and I'm thinking, wow, like this guy's really getting, and he's not really eating either. He's, he's really getting beat up. Uh, so I move him over to the, uh, back to the quarantine tank. I didn't, I was concerned maybe a little bit, like I, I didn't uh, drip acclimate him, but it's pretty much the same salinity and temperature, um, just within 0.01 or something like that. So I, uh, Anyway, the next morning, that bang guy is dead, and he must have been, I don't know, he was super stressed out. Um, so to catch you guys up, I still have, uh, I have the two clowns on my display at this point. I have the royal grandma and the, um, and the cardinal fish in the uh, quarantine tank, and uh, things seem to be going okay, but I don't want to uh, introduce anything too quickly. Um, the royal grandma's hiding inside this, this area in the quarantine, and the bang guy is uh, kind of keeping up space, just, just swimming around. Uh, eventually, um, a few weeks later, so they're in there for about a month, the, uh, the bang guy uh, gets bit by my royal grandma. I moved the royal grandma over first, 
uh, and the world grammar seemed to be doing okay with the clownfish, although it was kind of uh, a little bit aggressive. I figured it would uh, stay away from the clownfish um, and because it would um, it would hide in the rocks. And then um, I added a cleaner shrimp again just to see how it would do, along with a peppermint shrimp. And I think she she is distract, distracted enough by the other fish that she didn't she doesn't really mess with the shrimp anymore. So that was great. Um, so a big win there. And then I um, and then I'm wondering when can I add the uh, royal grandma? I want its it, its fins started to heal, which they do heal. Um, and so um, so I decided I would move the royal grandma over. And I was instructed by a hobbyist um, to, to 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 put it in the breeder. Um, uh, net for two to four weeks and I, I came across some other information that I could just do it in one week and it was getting a bit of a hassle because there was algae that's accumulating on the on the breeder net and so I put it in for one week they get used to each other I, I um, pro tip let the uh, fish out at night which I did it was like midnight or something like that all the other fish are kind of like lethargic and sleeping um, and so let let him out and all that happens really now is just the uh, my Royal Grandma will um, will just kind of uh, assert her um, claim on certain areas in the tank by just kind of charging at the other fish, but I haven't seen any bites. It's been two weeks. So uh, that's my story about how I, uh, so far, have been able to beat fish aggression. At first, you know, I was reading some forums where uh, people got rid of their Royal Grandmas because, of, because they couldn't keep other fish with them. But using a breeder net, letting them get used to each other, and having a few other fish in there to distract and other inverts to distract uh, the, the fish, uh, seem to kind of like create, finally create an, an ecosystem where um, everybody kind of knows their place. And it is only a 16 gallon, so um, I, I do have uh, one other fish that I'm, I'm gonna put in along with another small invert it's going to be very exciting um the yasha gobi and candy cane pistol shrimp pair but they're too small right now for me to feel like i could put them in they're both eating in the five gallon quarantine that i have i'm excited to put them in so my five tips to beat fish aggression are one to research male and female traits uh just to make sure like for me in the bangai cardinal situation um, i should have known that i absolutely needed a male and a female I ended up with two males and they really just can't live together. Uh, two, give fish enough space. So uh, make sure you understand where the fish will live, if they're like a free swimmer or if they live among the rocks. When I reintroduced the royal grandma, I knew that'd be okay, maybe without a breeder box because she would hide in and around the rocks and clownfish don't go in and around the rocks. Three, introduce new fish in a breeder net for one week and then let them out uh, when the other fish are sleeping. Uh, that was the perfect method for uh, the cardinal fish. Um, his friend got beat up by the clownfish. He himself got nipped at from, and, and, and lost a bit of a fin from the royal grandma. But when I introduced him for a week in the preter net and then he and then let him out, uh, he was just fine and they haven't messed with him. It's been a month now. And tip number four is to distract aggressive fish by adding more livestock. So the royal grandma, when she was in there with just the peppermint shrimp, she was pretty fixated on messing with him. And uh, when she saw the cleaner shrimp, it was like, man, you're bigger. You and I are the two alphas in this tank. I'm gonna nip at you. And, but once there were a couple clownfish in the tank distracting her, she wasn't that interested in the shrimp anymore. So I think, um, just adding more diversity in your tank can really reduce the aggressiveness of the fish that you have. And then tip number five is to keep a small quarantine tank, maybe a five gallon, um, and possibly use it as a frag tank as well. That, that's what I have right now, the Evo 5, and it's been great. And so if you ever have any aggressive fish, you can move them over. I keep it at about the same salinity. It is super easy to have this five gallon. Whenever I do a water change, I take one gallon, which is like about 10% of my display tank. I move it over to the five gallon, which is like 20%, over 20% of that tank. And it's just very easy to keep that second smaller tank because you can just use reuse the water from your display tank 
in the smaller tank. And um, contrary to popular belief, the smaller tank's temperature is uh, very easy to, to keep stable. Uh, I don't even have to use a fan on it. It's in a bit of a shaded area in my house, but it's the BioCube that actually gets hotter. Um, and so it's really not that hard to keep stable and I don't have to top off the water just but maybe weekly. So those are the five tips. I hope you guys have luck beating fish, fish aggression and let me know in the comments below how you've done it and if some of these tips have helped. Thanks.